the Michael Popak with a legal AF hot take. Sometimes you do bad things and you lie in a civil case, you go to jail. You know, you're criminally prosecuted, you you plead guilty and you go to jail. Alan Weisselberg, case in point, former chief financial officer for Donald Trump for 50 years with the Trump family. He's going back to jail for five months on a plea deal reached on a sentencing deal reached by the Manhattan DA's office prosecuting him along with his lawyers. What did he do wrong? He lied under oath to the New York Attorney General in a civil fraud case. Not even criminal where he lied. But if you lie under oath, civil or criminal cases, you go to jail. It's called perjury. And if your lawyers like Chris Keist and Alina Haba that represented Alan Weisselberg and you knew or should have known he wasn't telling the truth, then you have a problem too. It's called suborning perjury. You can be referred to the Bar Association, or in this case, the Appellate Department, the Appellate Division First Department in New York for discipline. It's a big problem. Why did the Manhattan DA investigate and prosecute Alan Weisselberg? Well, they couldn't let it lie. They couldn't let, well, okay, he lied under oath. Forbes magazine just called them out. We'll ignore it. Okay, so that wasn't going to happen. And also they knew that Alan Weisselberg was a potential witness in the um, case against Donald Trump. Why? Because Alan Weisselberg, along with Michael Cohen, who will be testifying in that case, they were the ones that handled the money transfer right? Follow the money where $130,000 was paid to Stormy Daniels, you know, as part of a scheme where anytime um, Trump committed, uh, as alleged, um, sexual misconduct, uh, he made that story go away by paying off the person. He used Alan Weisselberg, Weisselberg um, and um, ultimately Michael Cohen as the middleman. Michael Cohen would get the 130000 in the case of Stormy Daniels. It would be listed on the books and records fraudulently as the indictment reads uh, in the Trump organization as a legal payment to Michael Cohen or a bonus to Michael Cohen or something like that. He would then use the money to pay off Stormy Daniels and enter into a non-disclosure agreement. That's how they would do the catch and kill program over and over again. Al Weisselberg, the CFO, responsible for the books and records on the financials, authorized the transfer of the money to Michael Cohen and like that. Now, Michael Cohen, of course, is going to testify. He went to jail already once related to some of these issues, um, but he's, you know, he's a new man. He's uh, pled guilty and served his time and served his debt to society. And he's a lead witness for the Manhattan DA. The question that was always on everybody's mind is, will the Manhattan DA try to use Alan Weisselberg to continue the links in the chain in front of that jury in New York? Or were they going to fry him with this prosecution, make him radioactive, and disqualify him from being used at least by Donald Trump, if you will? And that's what they had to do. Uh, I don't think Alan Weisberg left them any, any choice. He, he had lied under oath. They cut him a deal. And the deal that they cut him, just so you understand it, is that they could have prosecuted him for violating his probation. Because by lying under oath at the trial, he was on probation for tax fraud, meaning that if he violated his terms of his probation by committing other crimes, he could have been sent back to jail and have his sentence increased related to um, the tax fraud. And then, of course, he'd be a two-time loser when it came to sentencing this time around. So the Manhattan DA did him a solid, given his age and other things. They let him plead guilty to lying during the depositions that happened before he went into jail and before he took his plea deal, or I'm sorry, he got convicted by a jury before he was sentenced and was on probation in the tax fraud case. They let him plead guilty to crimes that happened before that. And they skipped the part about him lying under oath during the trial in front of Judge Angoron. Although Judge Angoron, as I will discuss in the later part of this hot take, he's interested in what happened there. And we'll talk about and, and about the lawyers that allowed it to happen there. Just put a pin in that for a minute. Let me complete the thought here about Alan Weisselberg. So he pleads guilty to two counts of perjury related to kind of his pre-sentencing on the other crime activity. It's going away. He's already started. Five-month prison sentence. The judge uh, in the Rikers Island, the judge today allowed him to take, you know, she took the deal. that She didn't have to, but she did. She took the deal. And she sentenced him to the five months um, uh, related to that. She asked uh, Alan Weisselberg if he had anything to say to the court. And he said, no, I don't, Your Honor. And the whole sentencing took five minutes and he's off to Rikers Island. Now, as part of the plea deal, I haven't really seen the actual document, so I'm relying on reporting about the plea deal. But the reporting that's out there on the plea deal is that the, the Manhattan DA not only allowed him to plead guilty to two counts prior to uh, his his sentencing on the tax fraud counts, 
as a as a break, but they also gave him another break. They said, we're not going to call you as a witness. So the Manhattan DA is not going to call him as a witness at trial. Okay. I had thought that at least they may reserve the opportunity to recall him as a rebuttal witness should somebody say something that he needs to refute. But I guess they felt that he's so radioactive that he's not even worth as a two-time felon fraudster and somebody who lies under oath to put it back on the stand. That doesn't mean we've seen the last of Alan Weisselberg. I mean, we'll have to see the final witness list for Donald Trump. He may try to call Alan Weisselberg, although now he's been made so radioactive by the Manhattan DA successfully prosecuting him twice and sending him away away to jail twice and him agreeing and being convicted of perjury that the chances of, of Donald Trump using him now are nil. I mean, the chances of anybody really testifying in favor of Donald Trump at this trial, including Donald Trump, are really uh, are, are receding quickly into the distance. Proper sleep can increase focus, boost energy, and improve your mood. Introducing Beam's Dream Powder, a science-backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep. If you know me, you know that Dream has been a game changer for my sleep, and boy, do I need sleep these days. I drink Beam's Dream Powder each night in order to get my optimal sleep. And I gotta say, I wouldn't be recommending this if it didn't actually help me. And today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder. They're science-backed, healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Better sleep has never tasted better. Now available in delicious flavors like chocolate peanut butter, cinnamon cocoa, and sea salt caramel. With only 15 calories and zero grams of sugar, other sleep aids can cause next day grogginess. But Dream contains a powerful all-natural blend of reishi, magnesium, L-theanine, melatonin, and nano-CBD to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. The numbers don't lie. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get better sleep. Beam Dream is easy to add to your nighttime routine. Just mix Dream into hot water or milk froth and enjoy before bed. Find out why Forbes and the New York Times are all talking about Beam and why it's trusted by the world's top athletes and business professionals. If you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream Powder, get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash legalaf and use code legalaf at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash legalaf and use Use code LegalAF for up to 40% off. Now the last point of this hot take. What happens in the New York Attorney General case now that it's been admitted, there's a conviction and a sentencing for Alan Weisselberg having lied. Yes, the Manhattan DA didn't get the sentence on his line during the trial, but there's a judge who's still presiding over all matters related to the Attorney General successful uh, uh, um obtaining the judgment against Donald Trump for the New York civil fraud case for $455 million. And now the judge and the New York attorney general want to get to the bottom of what did, what did Kais and Haba know and when did they know it about their client, because they represented Alan Weisselberg, about their client, Alan Weisselberg, during that civil trial. And how did they allow Alan Weisselberg to take the stand and testify so falsely, so so pet patently falsely, that Forbes magazine ran an article during real time during the trial say, Alan Weisselberg just lied because we knew we interviewed him and he's the one that pushed the 30,000 square foot lie. So now there's going to be an evidentiary hearing. I don't know if Alan Weisselberg is going to testify. You know, the plea deal that's been reported is only about him not being called by the prosecutors in the uh, Stormy Daniels hush money cover up case, not about the um, about this case or about the Trump calling him in that case. So we'll have to see. And I think, as we've said in prior hot takes and on Legal AF, that Kais and Haba are in trouble because they knew or should have known. And when the judge asked them point blank, what do you know? This is after the trial while he was about to write his judgment. What do you know about Alan Weisselberg and the report that I'm seeing in the paper that he lied under oath and he took a plea deal on March the 4th? What do you know about that? They said, we don't know anything, Your Honor. Uh, We can't tell you anything. We don't know anything. Well, he's going to find out what they knew. And whether Alan Weisselberg is a relevant witness to all that or not, we'll find out. And we'll do it on Legal AF. We don't blow smoke or sunshine there. It's on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We sit at the intersection of law and politics just like this. And as practicing lawyers, we bring you our best reporting and our best analysis because we practice in the courtrooms that we talk about. 
And so if you like this kind of legal analysis and you don't like smoke or sunshine being blown your way, you've come to the right place. Wednesdays, I do the show with Karen Friedman at Niflo and Saturdays with Ben Mysalis. And then on hot takes, just like this one, you like my body of work, you like what I do, go over to my playlist on, on Midas Touch. It's, it's under Michael Popak. You'll find about 1,300 or so of my hot takes, just like this one. And if you like legal analysis at the nitty gritty level, sort of a TED Talk meets a law school, join our Patreon at, at uh, patreon.com slash legal AF. So until my next hot take, until my next legal AF, well, until my next Patreon exclusive video, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, legal AF law breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on legal AF exclusive content you won't find anywhere else all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee join us at patreon.com slash legal af that's patreon.com slash legal af